You know what? The world is fucked, right? Is that where we're starting? The world is no? fucked? Oh, yeah. The capitalist system is fucking unsustainable. Like, the first thing we would have to do... Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. You, ha you have a whole <laughs> revolution planned out? Well, sort of. Hello? Hi. Can I actually, uh, before we start, can I just leave you with the stream for like a minute? Just go outside. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you can go outside. So that I don't, like, dis disturb my family and shit, you go know? Go outside. Go, go get it. Get out of here. Thank you. Look at this guy. Who is this guy? Hi, Gek. Hey, man. <laughs> What's your name? I am Andy. I noticed that you have a plus 420 area code. What country is that? Oh, yeah. That's the Czech Republic, my man. The country wow. of beer and casual racism. There we go. <laughs> 420 blazer. Yeah. Uh, where in the Czech exactly. Republic are you? Uh, just in the Prague, you know, region. <laughs> cool, man. Name I went to Prague. Capital. I went to Prague uh, like five years ago. It was great. Um, they have all these like oh, cool underground bars and shit. They hmm. have, what else do I remember from Prague? I had oh, yeah. um, like a, they, some bread bowl goulash. Is that what it's called? Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> I have no idea what, what that okay. might be. Right, and what that fucking like shithole that might be serving. <laughs> well, oh, anyway. Goulash is great, though. <laughs> is goulash not a Prague really food? Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. Not not like oh, okay. Prague food. Maybe it's not even like Czech origin. But yeah, it's, it's heavily, heavily eaten here. It Maybe sounds kind of like a. I it think. sounds kind of like a, a death trap. Like like if somebody <laughs> has has been arrested, you send them to the goulash. <laughs> That's so good, man. <laughs> you can do this to me. <laughs> I call you with a depression, and you make my mood good. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> uh, well, what's up, man? Oh. What's uh? You had a, a, did you have a particular thing you wanted to talk about? Well, yeah, sort of. It's been like a long time brewing, like years. And like ever since like a year ago, I found your stream. I wanted to call in, but I never actually dreamed of making it. Fucking hell. This is awesome. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So first of all, um, you know how the world is fucked, right? Is that where we're starting? The world is no. fucked? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that's, okay. well, you know, that's well, what start, I see everywhere. So. Let's start here. Let's start here. Why do you why do you see everywhere that the world is fucked? Well, just because it is, you know? Like, I, I know I consume, like, too much American, like, you know, info. So I know way too much about American stuff, even though the stuff here, you know, in Czech Republic is basically fine but like compared to america but so uh but yeah i just you know i see all these like little clues that you know the capitalist system is fucking unsustainable and we need to switch off it fucking quickly uh unless we want to i don't know get burned i guess <laughs> you know stuff like that and i've been thinking that Maybe there's like a brute force method to it that you might be, or like someone like me might be able to go out to like, I don't know, an English speaking place because that sure as shit ain't here. Are you uh, talking about trying just, to kill the president? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You got it on the nail. No. Andy! No. Of course not. Um, <laughs> okay, hold on. Slow down for me real quick. So you're talking about. Um, a brute force method. By the way, just in case if any Secret Services members are watching, <laughs> we're ta we're talking about killing the president of uh, in a video game of McDonald Land, which which is the, yeah. the the Mayor McCheese, and that's not even a real person. But anyway, <laughs> okay, yeah, exactly. So. So yeah, no, I wasn't talking about like a violent resolution. Just you did you say know, brute like, force. Uh, yes, but I meant what I meant was like the world is evolving and we are progressing into a better future, but it's far too fucking slow. 
So I, I, I wanted to just like go out somewhere where a lot of people can speak English and understand. And, you know, like go to a fucking square and just speak my mind about this. Just convince people that this shit is fucking wrong because I know it is, <laughs> you know, and uh, maybe that way we could just jumpstart the whole process fucking in a day, maybe a week. So and, you're talking about you you want to you want to go to a town square and just start rallying people about how the world is fucked. Well, yeah, not just about how this, how the world is fucked, but how how we can fix it super easily if we just you know stop alienating everyone who's different and accept some viewpoints that maybe don't really vibe with us or whatever. How do you think you know. we can achieve world peace, Andy? Well, you know, dropping capitalism is the first thing, because the way I see it, it's the it's the top brass just, you know, using this concept of money to basically keep us in, like, what's called wage slavery, you know, where people live paycheck to paycheck and they can't really improve their lives or you know, do anything with the money because they all have it. They have it all planned out with the money. So I've so got a question. They're for not you. really going to get anywhere. Yeah. So I know that like America is. I mean, I'm I'm dumb. I don't know. I haven't read the books, <laughs> the Karl okay. Marx stuff. But I know that America <laughs> is like known for like like as as I guess the most capitalist country, yeah. right? And everyone's like, ah, and in different places they do it better but what's the system in the czech republic is it the same thing or do you guys do it differently well it's it's more or less the same except you know over here in europe especially in the union we're a bit more socialized or like you know we have a bit more socialistic uh tendencies towards like healthcare and education which is sort of i see it as the basics of what the state should fucking do and you know the U.S. system just uses uses all that to just make more money, which is again capitalism, and it's you know it gets its fucking roots into everything and fucking corrupts it into a way for someone one rich asshole sitting on one rich asshole chair to just to sit on a slightly bigger pile of money. You know. <laughs> so this depression that you're talking about, Andy, is it mainly centered around like social, political, economic issues at a large? scale well <laughs> you could argue that i'm just projecting this shit and you know the depression is just me and the world isn't actually all that bad and it's getting better as fast as it can but i don't believe that i think we're better as human beings and i think we could do a hell of a lot better if we just communicated with each other well, what's your personal life like? Do you go to school? Do you walk <laughs> around? What do you What do you do? No, I, I dropped school right before finishing high school because I saw it as a place of indoctrination, basically. And uh, now, yeah, I I didn't work for like half a year after getting getting fired from a, a wood shop, and then the wood shop got fired too. And the warehouse that got left hired me now. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm a warehouse worker, lowly, no wages warehouse worker. And just, yeah, feeling super beaten down by capitalism. I mean, I'm privileged. I, I have no, like, actual troubles. But I would like things to be different because I know there's way too many people that do face genuine fucking horrors. Mm. You know? Mm. I don't know. I just feel like if someone went out and started talking about it honestly and passionately, people would see capitalism for the monster that it fucking is. <sighs> you know what I think is going to happen, Andy? I think you're going to go out into the town square and you're going to uh, step up on a, on a box and you're going to rally the people of Prague and everyone's going to be like, yeah, fuck yeah. What, and then you got you got all these people. And they're all going to look at you and be like, well, what do we do now? And you're going to be like, fuck, I didn't think I would yeah. get this far. And then you guys can go storm a candy <laughs> store or something like that. 
Yeah, no, because I, I didn't. I don't think I would. I will get that far. But if I do, I do have it planned out. <laughs> you do it. So you hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you have you have a whole <laughs> revolution planned out. Well, sort of. It's all like fuzzy in my head because I haven't written anything of it down. But the concrete points still stand because all right. Like the first thing we would have to do is just you know drop the concept of currency to release us from the shackles of our fucking uh, capitalist overlords. Which would free us, you know, to do whatever the fuck we please. Finally, and you know, some people would see this as fucking anarchy, but I think we're better than that. We wouldn't just like fucking start killing each other like the purge, <laughs> just just because there's no money to be had. Well, what would what we? The fuck is so, that if there was, if there was no money, what would what would we do? Well, what do you mean? We do, we would do whatever. Like you know, there's a ton of problems in the world. And you know, leaving money behind would just free us to deal with those problems, whether it's people needing help or, you know, the planet burning or whatever. <laughs> Shit like that. Why don't you? Because Andy, you know, why don't you go? Why don't you go start oh, a? Why don't you go start like a commune or something? Why don't you go to the the town square, rally up a couple hundred people, and go start a little society? <laughs> Well, that would be nice, but that would still solve nothing because it would be just, you know, like you say, a couple hundred people living off the land that they choose to live off of. Well, geez, but Andy, still Andy, there would be the capitalist overlords. Yeah? Andy, how the hell are you, Andy? How the hell are you gonna change the entire world if you don't even want to go and, and change a hundred people? No, I. <laughs> this isn't a question of scale. I ju I'm just saying that. Uh, Doing it on a lesser scale than the entire world would be pointless. Because as long as there's, you know, countries fucking polluting or whatever, and com fucking, you know, what's, what are they called? Companies. Ah, just the capitalist overlords, you know. As long as they're free to do whatever the fuck they want, they're gonna, like, fuck shit up. To the fucking... Andy, have you made yeah? a con have, have you unconsciously made a contract with yourself that you will be unhappy hmm. until all human suffering is eliminated? <laughs> Not really. You are close, though. I have made a contract with myself fully consciously that I won't start working on myself until I see the world start working on itself, you know? Because I feel like whatever I feel about me is bad, I got from the world. Because I feel like, you know, I can't help myself for shit. I can't, uh, I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm, you know, fucking up all the time. And I, I think I got that from, like, the general culture of the world. Like, you know, people just not willing to help other people just because they're different and shit like that. So I don't know how much you... sense that makes. Well, it does make sense, but when you say I'm not going to help myself until I'm not going to try to fix myself until the world mm -hmm. fixes itself, does that just like does that just manifest itself as you just being unhappy and and upset all day and not trying to like well, use any amount of your agency to make mm -hmm. life for you a little bit better? Well, no, like I still like do stuff for me because there's stuff I enjoy and stuff I like laugh at and stuff I cry about and shit, happy cry, you know, and all this kind of shit. And, you know, no amount of suffering in the world will stop me from laughing. And I recognize that. But still, there's like I have like, you know, physical or medical problems or like mental shit as well. There's way too much of that. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, um, until I see the world going in a direction where I know it's uh, worth it for me, you know, for the for my future to work on myself, then I won't. Like, I don't okay, want to work towards something and then just, you know, have the world and just want to commit okay. suicide, you know. Okay. <laughs> All right, so... That would be shitty. So, so, let me think about what you just said and make sure I understand it. yeah. So you don't want to work on yourself because it would be 
pointless because even if you did work on yourself, you would be living in a fucked up world no matter what. Yes. And there is nothing that you Basically. can do to unfuck the world that you live in. Yes. I, I have I have a, I have a few thoughts on that if if you if you okay, okay. want to hear them. So fire away. Like uh, sorry. <laughs> you know man, I I actually think I think about this stuff a lot. I really do. I really think about yeah? this stuff a lot, especially okay. because especially because it's it's really it's a really prevalent conversation for a lot of people yeah. in terms of like but it is. You know, there's there's the system and whatever capitalism and socialism, and then there's like society at large. There's individualism. There's what can you do mm. for yourself. There's what can you do for other people. And I think about all this stuff, and I don't have a definitive answer for it. I, one thing I do think about is that I do, I don't understand why there's why it's a binary. You know what I mean? I don't understand why it's always oh, yeah. like. Like, why is it like either I, you know, why are the two choices, you know, make yeah, yourself capitalism better? Capitalism or, or communism. Well, why, well, why are, <laughs> not, not that. I mean, why are the two choices? Okay, okay. Makes, why are the two choices make society better or make myself better? Like, why are, why is that a binary? Why can't yeah. I do whatever is within my agency to make my own life better? And then also try to do whatever is within my own agency yeah. to um, help the people around me, man. I mean, sure, you know, you can yeah, sit yeah. and be, like, uh, upset at the current systems that are are what's going on right now. And, you, and, you, mm -hmm. and you know, you can criticize them to death and be right in your criticisms. And you yeah. could be trying to enact change through those criticisms but at the end of the day it's like i don't i don't i'm trying to figure out you know just for you andy like what's gonna make you mm -hmm. not go through life feeling so shitty all the time you know that's what i'm thinking about <laughs> so, yeah well can, can you, nice you and there's also help. like You're well there's so also <laughs> well there's also like uh, i assume a feeling of helplessness because this is such a global issue that you're in your yes. tiny little single human brain trying to solve yeah. and it's impossible but there is certain things that you could do so that when you go to sleep at night you can go well at least i tried my best and the rest is out of yeah. my control and i accept <laughs> that and so i'm like okay what is you trying your best look like does it look like you going out into the town square and having a microphone <laughs> And just literally <laughs> to the people saying your thoughts and feelings. Maybe it could look like that. And maybe you would go and do that. And then when you go to sleep at mm -hmm. night, you can go, I didn't solve the global economic crisis, but I tried my best to, you know. Yeah. So I, I, maybe you would feel better at least trying to. I don't I don't know. I mean, you have you have agency yeah. of some kinds. Do you exactly. agree with that? I mean, you have a you have a very valid point. Of if I tried, I would be significantly significantly happier. But there's a lot of you know uh, fear that that won't work out. And like, <laughs> if that doesn't work out, like I might just keep trying. But if I don't, I'll just you know I'll be even more miserable. It'll Why be like would that make you miserable though? Isn't that life? You well, wake up, you try, and you try, and you try, and then you get cancer well, yes. and die. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, this specific one, failing this specific challenge, would mean to me that we're doomed as a human race. And Andy, all of you the things we've Andy, done and all of the things we know. Eddie, Eddie, you can't be telling me right now that you are trying to... Like literally, just as one guy, take on all the world's <laughs> problems, and you're lit you're literally saying right now, if I cannot solve world hunger, the global economic crisis, well, and achieve world peace, I will be happy. <laughs> that's crazy. I, I I know that sounds crazy, but that's not really what I'm saying. Like I'm saying that there needs to be like a thought revolution. For at least for the people who are like, I don't know, fucking conservative boomers and shit like that. 
and they they need to realize you know that our side of the argument is right that capitalism does need to fucking change at the very least or be extinct totally and right uh, and i and i and andy and i i support your taking whatever action is within you to to fight for your causes but if you're so fu- – but this is just general. This isn't even a political – this is not a political thing what I'm saying. This is just about yeah. what – this is just about what is and is not in your control and about how if you obsess over things that aren't in your control, you're going to be deeply unhappy. And I think yeah, yeah, yeah. working toward – and you working towards and campaigning towards and taking whatever action is within you as an individual towards – Things that you believe in are positive, great things. But I think weighing your happiness on the outcome of a thing that is just <laughs> totally beyond any one individual's control is just is a recipe well, yeah, for look, constant sadness. Look, this is what I try to say, because the, that thought revolution, it has to have a beginning somewhere. And, it, you know, logically, it has to be one mind. And, you know, I'm not saying, like, I'm saving the world. I'm just saying, like, if if someone voiced this, then we could save the world as humans, as a species. And that's not too big, you know, because there's seven fucking eight, almost eight billion of us. They're, that's a fucking force, man. We could do anything. Can I also say that? Can I also say this one thing before? Yeah. Um... Before I believe we might have exhausted the the, the bounds of this conversation. Oh yeah, <laughs> I want to say this. I expected it to go. I talked. Well, that okay, way. we talked about. I want to say this, and I hope this gets to you in some way. You talked okay. about the. We talked about the hundred people that you mm-hmm. rally up, and then you and you said, "Well, what's the point if it's just a hundred people?" And it's like the world is the world is just a lot of a hundred people. You know. Well, yeah. I just and meant, you, like, you know, if it's a hundred people that go off and, like, separate from rest of society, that's pointless. Because the rest of society would go on as it's now, you know? <laughs> so I just, what, if I were you, if I were, here, Andy, if I were you, I would yeah? go take, I would take a walk around your neighborhood. That's what I did just now with this take fucking a, phone call. I would take a walk <laughs> around your neighborhood, and I would just look at what's directly around you. Or even the people that you talk to in your daily life, your friends, your Mm -hmm. family, whatever you're doing. And I would just, in what's directly in front of you, go, how can I help or improve these things? If you're focusing focusing on how I'm going to save the world, you're just going to, you are just going to drive yourself insane and you seem like a cool guy Andy, and i don't want to watch you oh thank you. just go insane I mean, and kill yourself <laughs> i would <laughs> well oh i should stop that <laughs> just think oh. you know uh, i i don't know man i i hate that you're like hinging your happiness upon such uh gigantic well, yeah issues but like, how can I be happy? How can any truly empathetic person be happy in a world where so much useless suffering, you know, occurs? You limit that's your what, empathy. That's what I see it as. To, you limit your empathy yeah? to about... You limit your empathy to about 100 people. <laughs> you go... It's, and that's this is not, not good, I'm not, though. This, no, 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 Why would you I, limit I empathy? <laughs> I have no... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have no um, oh. qualms. With the, I don't... Yeah? What, like, whatever. I don't... I'm, I'm not... Like here to argue about what makes a person a good person, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. But yeah. at least personally, I think realistically, realistically, you can only truly, actually care about like maybe a hundred people. That's untrue. <laughs> I don't know. Me, like the way I see it, and I, I don't just, even. I don't think that's know, that. Bad. I, I don't think that's everyone. that bad. But you, like, can't, yeah. you can't. But you it, can't. It's, it's you like can't true really... that you can like know a hundred people. That's but, okay. Because, but like, the, why would okay. that make you care? Andy, give me. Andy, others, give me a second. Know? Give me a second. Andy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. If let's look every day, there's all around the world 
hundreds and hundreds of people being k- fucking killed in terrorist attacks and starving oh, to yeah. death and all uh, these thousands, things. Man. And it's uh, thousands. And I'm, we can't uh, look to say we don't care about them is like, but uh, how do I say this? Obviously, you care, but mm-hmm. there's only so much that you can do for other people. And if you pick, okay, these are the even it, dude. Even if it's just my family, even if it's this is my son, this is my wife, this is my daughter. These are the three people that I'm going to make a lot of active effort to make sure I can improve their lives. And then when I read on the news about these people that are dying somewhere else, I'm going to go, that sucks. But today I have to feed my children. You know what I mean? I have to water my crops, Hmm. proverbially, whatever that means, you know? And I don't know if that makes somebody a piece of shit, but it's like the opposite of that, trying to... Yeah. Trying to go insane over every horrible thing happening everywhere <laughs> at the world all the time. It's just our brains are not meant to be able to do that. Well, yeah, I guess mine is. Like, I just do that. I just live like that, you know. And I know it sounds fucking shitty, but I think someone has to. You know? Well, Andy, I hope... I, don't you, I hope... I hope... <laughs> you do can you ca- carve out five minutes for yourself to just look at the sky and go I'm o- you know I'm fine well yeah I do that you know give, like give I mentioned yourself five nothing stops me from day. laughing oh yeah I, I have hours <laughs> uh, you know. Andy is there anything else that you want to talk about or say to the people at the computer before we go uh, just, I don't know, I guess be kind to everyone, especially yourself, unless they're being a dick or a fascist. And, oh yeah, what I want to end on, it's it's never morally, morally wrong to punch a fascist. Have a good rest of the day. <laughs> you too, Lyle. Bye. Oh my goodness. I wish we talked, I wish we talked more about goulash. Goulash is really good. I think it's some kind of soup. See, if I were that guy and I lived in Prague, what I would do today is I would go have some goulash and find a little cinnamon bun. And I would go, you know what? At this very... M- I, don't, I don't know about the past. I don't know about the future. I don't know what's going on in other countries. I don't know what's going on in other people's brains. But what I know for sure is that this particular individual moment where I'm eating this goulash and I'm looking at the sky it's pretty good hello hi oh my god is this the get go yeah what's your name uh, my name is Ashley Ashley how's life <laughs> it's pretty good wow I didn't think you called me Hey, check this out. Instead of you know, when you know that you know when that guy says Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh huh. Ashley, Ashley, Ashley. I don't know why the fuck I just said that. That was really. Um, <laughs> I I was as soon as I said, you know how that guy says Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I was like, I don't want to do the second part of this, but you don't I, I would have. It yeah, it would have been weird if I had abandoned it. Right. Um. Anyway, what's up? Not much. I uh, just texted seeing if maybe you wanted to hear about my unorthodox childhood a little bit. Yeah, sure. Let's 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 deorthodox this shindig. <laughs> All right. Um, so this was the early two thousands, you see, and uh, my mom was a single mom, and uh, she was raising three kids, and so my mom was an escort. And uh, she rose the ranks of escorthood to owning her own escort service. And I uh, just had a lot of crazy experiences. <laughs> Nothing crazy. My mom never put me in danger or anything like that. But just a lot of crazy, crazy stuff. Where do you want to start? 
Um, well, uh, let me think. Uh, one time, my how it worked is my mom when she. No, no, I'll start a little earlier than that. <laughs> so, my mom was an escort for this woman, and her name was Blaze. And she kind of she was one of the ones running the first escort service, I guess, in the area. And she was in a relationship with another escort, um, and she kind of like was roughing her up a little bit. And I remember just sitting in the car one day. My mom goes to get her her friend who is in a relationship with this other lady. Um, and I remember just watching my mom just beat this lesbian's ass her name was blaze and just kind of just beat her ass because she was beating her other her friend and then they kind of just started their own escort service together like sans the beating um and i was homeschooled and so there's like i'm sorry i'm all, <laughs> I'm all over the place um and so i just like that was just one of the the things that i remember my mom doing mm -hmm. um to defend her friend and then like there was just all kinds of like escorts you know sex workers um who would just hang out at our house then they'd go on calls and you know they would just they'd bring their kids it was a, it was a very strange kind of like a community growing up a uh, community of a lot of queer women a lot of uh like lgbt people um and their kids and uh there's still kind of like a little bit of shame like talking about it because it's you you bring up sex work and people kind of squick out and they're like oh like your mom was a bad person or you know those people are bad i don't know does that make sense what how does this affect you what do you do these days well i did get into online sex work um and I think it affected me because, like, I was never in a public school. We did homeschooling, or I guess you would call it unschooling. Um, so it's not kind of self-directed learning. Um, I think it's uh, affected me because, like, I can't really, you know, like, people talk about their childhood and, like, they, it's either, like, really, really bad or they have, like, kind of normal childhoods. And I don't really relate to a lot of the experiences. Um, and then when I do kind of open up, <laughs> which is so weird, I'm opening up to the internet right now. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> but like talking to like, you know, regular people, sometimes, uh, people you get close to, it can feel, I don't know, really isolating. And like, there's a lot of judgy stuff and I ended up doing some of that work myself. And so I was like, uh. I know. <laughs> are you are you still close with your mom? Oh yeah, she's great. We're very close. Does she still run the escort business? No, she she stopped doing that and we moved from the city that she was doing that in uh, because one of her friends was murdered, and so she kind of like packed us up and then we lived in a kind of a big city and then we moved to a really small town. And a very country kind of town. And so, like, that portion of my life, I was about a teenager. I think I was, like, 14. Uh, that portion of my life was really weird because we went from this big city and, you know, kind of diverse people to not a lot of diverse people. And, um, like, adjusting to that life and, uh, like, a lot of the values were very different. I mean, I guess it's never been acceptable. But there was a pretty heavy, like, um, evangelical, evangelical overtone in the town we lived in because it was very small, and so could not open up about it. So, what did she start doing when you guys moved? Well, she had a lot of money saved up because she had been doing it oh for years, and then she, <clears throat> like I said, she she was an escort, and then she kind of developed her own like service. And then she had people working for her, and so she was able to make a pretty decent, you know, life for herself. Um, so she lived about that for a little bit, but then she just got a regular job at a grocery store, 
and then met my stepdad and you know that was that it was like that chapter was closed and as far as there's cars um uh, how old are you now i'm 29 oh so this was about 15 years ago mm. still stuck um, in the past a little bit does your huh so and do you are you are you still doing like the camming stuff um, no, I stopped because I, I got a pretty good job at a doggy daycare. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, no, I, I don't do that anymore. I mean, not that I'm opposed to it. Like I could probably pick it back up if I ever needed the extra, you know, money. And uh, what's the deal with your dad? Is he in the picture at all? Oh, my biological dad is not. He um, tried to set us on fire when we were kids so tried to burn the house down with us in it so he's he went to prison and you know not a part of the life or our life at all why the hell did he do that you know he was an alcoholic uh super abusive um i was probably like three so i don't remember that it completely but um there's a lot of back and forth with my mom and uh my biological dad and uh one night he put accelerant on the doors and set the house on fire. Luckily, everyone got out. Um, but yeah, that was pretty. So that's kind of the, that set the tone because my mom was terrified of him because he was on the run. They didn't catch him right away. So yeah, she we didn't have any family. My mom uh, wasn't close with her side of the family. Uh, obviously, my bio dad's side of the family is not great um is he now is he still in prison i i want to say no maybe he didn't because he technically didn't murder any of us um but he did get caught for like four counts of attempted uh so i'm i want to say if he's out he, he probably got out maybe a few years ago i don't know I, I do not like to to think about that person. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. So. And what about your stepdad? Oh, he's great. Um, he was a military medic. He was in the Air Force, so he's great. He's he's a pretty cool person. I, I call him my norm, like my dad. Um, you know, he's a good guy. He uh, kind of came into our lives when we were teenagers. Um. But he, he knows about it. He, you know, my mom doesn't, I guess she didn't, obviously she's not going to keep it secret from her husband, but she did tell him and he was okay with it. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's like, I don't know how to, like, it's, it happened so long ago and so it shouldn't even matter anymore, I guess. But it does to me in a weird way. Interesting. Cause I, I was wondering, it. I was wondering, you know, um, no, wait, when you said, yeah, I was wondering, like, as you're telling me all this, and I know it happened about 15 years ago, I was wondering if you were telling this to me as a, um, you know, just uh, uh, an, an interesting anecdote about your life or if it was something that still, uh, you know, plagues you. Um, I think it's a little bit of both because, you know, it's kind of like a fun fact. I was like, you know what? The therapy gecko chat might want to hear, hear this. Um, but, yeah, no, I like... I, it, it probably does a little, like, not bother me because, like, nothing really terrible happened to me because of what my mom did. It's just the isolating experience of, like, the the perceptions of other people. They're like, oh, my God, your mom was a, a hooker and, and she exposed you to other hookers. <laughs> and, you know, I never saw, like, nothing, she'd never take me on calls. Like, I never, there was nothing, nothing like that. I'm sure that that has happened to a lot of people, but that was not the case. Um, hmm. but it's just the, the, the kind of assumption that like sex workers are, uh, bad people, I guess, just inherently when I think of what, well, I, what I think my mom from, from what, cool. <laughs> well, I was going to say from what you've told me, I like your mom a lot more than your dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's um, pretty cool. Like she did what she did to keep us, you know. 
a roof over our head and we wanted for nothing. Like we didn't just have our knees met. We had the extra stuff and I don't know. And how's she doing now? Is she, I mean, she seems like she's got a pretty good life. It seems like this, uh, new, this, I mean, he's not a new guy, but, um, the, the, your stepdad is, uh, a much better guy for her than the guy who tried to kill you guys. Um, Absolutely. So, like, is she happy and living good? She is. She, um, at least I think she is. We have some good talk. I mean, my childhood wasn't perfect. There was some kind of, like, she, you know, there was things that happened that, like, probably weren't the best. But, like, you know, not putting us in a regular school, you know, that's per- that's created obstacles for me for getting a job because I don't have high school transcripts. But, like, she's owned up to it, taken accountability for it, apologized, um... But now she's, I mean, she has a, a lovely life. She makes cups. <laughs> she sells, makes little uh, craft cups. And she, you know, they go to craft fairs all the time and, you know, sells her, like, her little things. And, yeah, it's a pretty good life for her. My sister's got kids and she's a good grandma, so. She makes uh, cups. She goes to craft fairs. Mm-hmm. That's what she does. That's pretty cool. Yeah, she makes like cups and stuff. Yeah, your sister. What's her whole deal with all this? Is this still? Does she still think about it? And um, yeah, what's her experience kind of been like? Um, her experience was a little bit different than mine because um, I was. She's the oldest, and I was the youngest. So my sister. Um, I'm not gonna get into her stuff, but like some unsavory things happened, and so she doesn't really like to talk about it. You know, she kind of, they all just, my mom and my brother, uh, they all just kind of moved on. And I'm like, I don't know why I'm still stuck in the past. Like, because it's like, I'm not ashamed of it. And I think that I had a pretty good experience. I think I'm a a well-rounded person because of those experiences. Like I was exposed to, especially back in the day, I don't know if anyone remembers the early 2000s of how you know, anti-gay stuff was like how people were pretty homophobic. And, um, I was exposed to that. It was just, it was completely normal for me. And then like, you know, I I learned a lot and I just feel like there's not a really like a safe place to like talk about it and like not feel the like obligatory. Like I have to express how that's probably not the best thing or whatever. I just want to talk about it in my experience. I don't know. I'm rambling. I'm so sorry. Well, it's um, I I don't know. I just keep thinking about the comparison because um, I mean, you know, you're talking when we're when we're talking about like, I guess bad childhoods or like bad. I guess we're talking about like like parenting, Mm -hmm. like the sort of what is good or bad parenting. It's like, Mm -hmm. well, at the very. If we compare your mom to your dad, your mom did did pretty well by you, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So so I if 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 the standard of a bad parent is to um you know set their children on fire, I think that um you know you you had a pretty good mom and you still have a good relationship with her and you seem like you have a good life. So you know as long as you're happy with uh your relationship with her and how everything turned out then i don't don't know if it matters so much what uh you know other people think yeah you think that that's like the answer right and it should be it's correct it's just like that lingering feeling of shame is still there for some reason and i i i I don't know how to get rid of it i don't know Uh, why have you ever talked to a real therapist about this i have what did they say (laughs) I, this is going to sound terrible, but I haven't opened up about that part because, because <laughs> I'm like, what if, when, what if she when, judges me? When you say that part, do you mean just, do you mean everything we've, we've been talking about? <laughs> yeah. Really? I'm like, not everything. Like, I'll dance around it. I won't, I'll just, it's not, I don't, it's lying by omission. So, like, I'll talk about experiences. Like, oh, I'll say, like, I had an unorthodox childhood. I was homeschooled, and I'll just kind of dance around that. Why do you avoid? I'm cur- I'm very curious as to why you avoid talking about it with your real therapist, but yet you're 
you feel comfortable talking about it in front of, you know, 10,000 internet strangers? I think it's because I've watched your stream for a really long time and I've heard people call in and like, you know, tell you really insane things about their life. And, you know, I don't just look for your reaction. I, I like the chat is really good about, you know, not being dicks uh, for the most part. Uh, and so, and there's like that veil of anonymity. You're not going to know who I am. Like, like I could say it and then just like, it's like a confessional, you know? So, I mean, has your therapist provided you with anything helpful, even out of the lack of information you've given them on this? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm a better person for therapy, but I know the big thing is that you got to be really honest with your therapist and I should absolutely talk to this talk to my therapist about this but it's just that shame you know what i'm talking about i don't i don't even know why it's there and so i should i should absolutely do that hmm. but this is a good um, step <laughs> good i'm glad to hear that yeah yeah you know i um i hope i hope that this that you know talking about all this stuff was helpful for you thanks for telling us all about this stuff it's yeah, uh, it's certainly you. very very fascinating i i hope um you know, uh, you know. Anytime someone is is talking about something like this that's uh, personal to them, I'm, I hope, I hope you, I hope you got a benefit out of it of some kind. Um, it's cathartic, yeah, or cathartic, um, cathartic. The um, word. Hmm. So, and how is your uh, uh, brother doing? He's cool. Your mom's cool. It's just you and your sister. Yeah, my brother's doing great. Um, he drives a motorcycle. He's living his life he doesn't really have kids i don't have kids either um my sister's got kids and i don't know he seems happy i'm sure he's got his own life stuff no one can truly i get i don't want to say happy content i guess mm -hmm. he's not you know struggling with addiction or anything like that i'm not struggling with addiction besides nicotine um and my sister's the same so i, I mean we're pretty good i think <laughs> You gotta keep, dude. I I'm a big fan of lowering the, uh, what would you call it? Lowering the the standards. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, if you're not addicted to drugs and killing people, you're doing pretty all right in this world. I think so. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. What's your name again? Ashley. 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 I'm going to cut that part. You know what? No, I'm going to keep it in. No, keep it. Keep um, it. It's, it's important. <laughs> well, Ashley, is there anything else you want to uh, say to the... Oh, fuck, there was one other question I was going to ask you. I fucking forgot what it was. We're going to keep this part <laughs> in, too. Ashley, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, Y'all be good to yourselves, I guess. And I'll be good to me. And thank you. Bye, Ashley. All right, bye. See, I should start my own um, uh, business of gecko escorts. I don't know what they would do. I don't know if it would be a sex thing. It might just be like a you can hang out with somebody in a gecko costume. Yeah, that'll... I'm gonna do that.